lift me up and I shall stand by faith on every stable land and I have played that I have found blood, blood, my feet on fire Good afternoon It's a privilege and an honor to be here with you this afternoon I was expecting this auditorium to be fully packed. But as it were, you had games. And if I were you, I would be sleeping, looking at the weather. But we thank God that you are all here. Adventist youth, when I was a NAS member, we, we used to say Adventist, you say, um, build up for Christ. I used to use it, that slogan, build up for Christ. So what do you say? Adventist student, then you say, build up for Christ. So Adventist student, are we building for Christ? All right, so I've been invited to talk on the topic, managing moral decadence among the youth. I thank God for being here. And I thank God that you are all here too. And I thank the organizers. I think next time they will help you by not putting games before such a topic. Because I look at the programs, they are all very important, but this one is for you. It affects you as a person and your future. And it's so important that you take particular attention to this topic, to this lesson. The last time I attended NAS Congress was in 1999. That time I was at the final year for my first degree. It's a long time ago. And that time we went to Tema Secondary School, Tema School. Thank you. <laughs> yes, and I enjoyed, I enjoyed every NAS Congress I attended. And I must say that it has, it's part of who I am. It has made me all the things that we learned at NAS congresses. So be, you have to participate in all the congresses. Don't, never, never stop attending NAS congress. I wish I had the opportunity of attending. Um, I traveled, I was not in the country, and that is one of the reasons that I miss all the NAS congresses mostly. And when I returned, work and family life prevented me. So I'm so delighted to be here this afternoon. Now let's look at the topic that has been given to me. Um, the topic itself has in it some assumptions. And I think you agree with me. Managing moral decadence among the youth. Now the assumptions I see here are that there exists moral decadence. And that the moral decadence has reached uncontrollable limits. And that the youth are particularly affected by the level of moral decadence. And that moral decadence has become a cause for concern. There are other two more. That there is a need to manage moral decadence and also how to mitigate moral decadence. All right, so these assumptions as we have, I hope that by the end of this, do I call it a lecture series or a presentation? I hope it's a lecture that can ask questions. Anyway, but at the end of this presentation, I hope that we'll be able to assess whether they are just mere assumptions as we call in law, rebuttable assumptions. Are they rebuttable or they are real? I hope at the end of it, we're able to um, assess and have that conclusion. Okay. So that's the assumptions that I was talking about. What is moral? Because I'm presenting before students, we will do some definitions. I hope it will not bore you. And moral, as we have it, refers to a set of rules, 
that define what is proper or a proper conduct. One is able to differentiate between what is right and what is wrong. You don't need anybody to tell them. But that is embedded in us. It's enshrined in us. God, in his own wisdom, when he created man, put his Holy Spirit in us. And we have something within us that tells us or that is able to alert us when we are going wrong or when we are doing bad or doing good. So it involves ethics wherein a person will not cross a certain line because it will be considered unethical or wrong. The word moral, in fact, it has a broad definition. So to be moral is to be disciplined, to be intelligent and sociable. And an individual's moral consists of his ideas, of what is right or wrong. And that is one of the problems I find in the definition. I will talk about that. And his conviction about his responsibilities. So when we talk of moral, that is the definition we have for moral. But we are not only talking about moral. We are talking about moral decadence. And from the word decay, that is where moral decadence is coming from. Decay is decline or to rot. And in our local parlance, when we say something is rotten, it means it stinks, right? So um, there's this song I heard some time back. I, I'm, I'm not too sure. But it was talking about, I think it's Kofi Kinata, one of them, about how our morals have declined. And he's saying that, it has a she, a pro, a woo, right? So um, it's dead. It has declined, it's decayed, it's rotten. That's what he's trying to say. So moral decadence is seen as a decay or decline in moral standards. It describes a lack of moral and intellectual discipline. So decadence is described as corrosive due to lack of ethical, moral, and sexual traditions. So when you talk of moral decadence, it means that we are falling away from ethics of our society. We are falling away from good behavior. We are doing something that is not right, that is not honest, that is not decent, that is not just, and that is not principled. And that is why when you say somebody is uh, morally upright, you expect the person to be a person of integrity, a person of good um, behavior and honest. So extreme delinquent, disorderly, irregularity, destructive, unjust, dishonest, non-conforming behaviors are also the antonyms of uh, moral moral uprightness. It can also be defined as failure to uphold sound morality in society. Now, I was speaking to a friend, and I like the way he defined immoral. He said anything beyond moral is immoral. And I think you agree with me, don't you? So anything beyond moral is what? Immoral. So if you are doing something that is not moral, it means you are rather doing what? An immoral action or act. Somebody, a Nigerian, uh, in his book, he wrote that in 2004. You see, a lot of people have written about uh, moral decadence among the youth. You can go online and search because it's a concern. It's a concern to our generation. If you have a great-grandmother, if you're happy to have a great-grandmother, I was fortunate I met my great-grandmother. And she was telling me about how in my grandmother's generation, their moral standard had declined. And my grandmother, who is still alive, will tell me that my mother's generation, their moral also declined. Their morals declined. My mother is also saying, my generation, we have declined in our moral standards. And I can also boldly say that your 
generation, your morals have also declined. So it is not something new. There's some, nothing new under the sun. What is going on now has been happening. Just that it has been declining at a faster space, pace. You see, the word is drifting. It's spinning faster to a collapse. And it's affecting everything that we do as, as persons. Why? Because we are drifting further away from the source of uh, moral uprightness. And that is God. So anything that we do that is beyond moral, that is contrary to what God expects us to do, is immoral. So I like that definition very, very well. One of the th concerns that I notice about our generation, your generation, because some of you are my children, I have my son here, is that you don't seem to think that there's something wrong with whatever is going on. You take it to be the norm. You don't even blush when you see somebody walking here half naked, would you? In our time, it was of major concern to us. So I have some pictures I'll be sharing with you. But before I do, let me also define what is youth. When you look at the uh, United Nations definition of youth, they say that it's between the ages of 15 to 24. But it didn't live there. It says that uh, states or countries can have their own definition of who a youth is. And some of the states will say that's up to 29, what we call the vac uh, vaccinarians. When you say somebody is a vaccinarian, it means the person is between the age of 20 to 29. And so tracinarian will be what? 30 to 39. Can you guess what 40 to 49 will be? Quadrigenarian. Okay, and then like that. Okay. So um, the World Health Organization and the UN in definition of youth is 15 to 24. But I've already said that it depends on the country's definition. Now, it's a matter of concern because when you look at the age 15 to 24, these are the formative years for anybody. That's when you will be in school, you, 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 you will be trying to learn a trade or a skill. So it's very important. And if at that time you don't have good morals, you, 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 you are not disciplined, then there's a problem. And we have a lot of um, examples of what we call moral decadence. And such uh, uh, examination moral practice, you may not think that it's, it's not right or it's, it's wrong to, to cheat, but it is, it is wrong. Examination moral practice, Occultism. We are in the central region. I have been at uh, Cape Coast for three years now. And as I sit there, a lot of cases come before me. Unfortunately for me, I, get, I tend to get all the occultism and all the ritual murders and the, uh, sexual offenses brought to my court. So I meet a lot of youths who, who, are, who, are, youth who are brought before me from ages 18 to 25 thereabout. Involved in occultism. Students at some of the secondary schools who go on the beach at night for occultic practices. We have truancy, disrespect, emphasis of materialism. If you remember, in Ghana, at just here, Kaswa, uh, not long ago, we had some youth from age 16 going. And you all remember that um, they had a ritual murder. They intended initially to kidnap a child and then demand a ransom from the child's parents. But then when they were brought to court, they said that um, unfortunately they saw some advertisement on, the, on, on TV somebody demanded body parts for the purpose of making ritual money on our television. And they were influenced by that advertisement. 
So instead of just kidnapping the child for a ransom money, they decided or they ended up killing the child to get the parts of the child for ritual money. Another area of concern is indecency and immodesty in dressing. Our ladies dress half naked and our guys, they suck their trousers below their waistline, what you call the autophysis. What you don't know that is a statement for something. Maybe one day you can research for yourself. I won't tell you. We have alcoholism. In fact, when you rate Ghana our problem, the moral decadence in Ghana, those that are really worrisome, we have the sexual offenses, we have alcoholism, drug abuse, and then we have um, dishonesty. Um, I, will, I will add homosexuality and lesbianism separates, okay, I will separate that from the sexual immorality, uh, masturbation and all that. And then we have disrespect for elders, resulting in insults on social media. You have people uh, insulting with the president. And we have killings for ritual murder and among um, the rest that you all know. So moral decadence is really a major concern. One of the problems that we face in Ghana, I must say, is that we don't really conduct research, but we have people conduct a lot of research of late um, in Nigeria, in the neighboring countries. But few of the research that I got, I got hold of will tell us that we are really running into crisis as a nation with our youth. Um, look at um, some of the uh, women, and they are smoking, right? Can you see it clearly? And is, it, is it fashion? Or oh, in the name of fashion? What, what is happening? There's something they call the shia shia. Have you seen that one? What? Shisha. And then you see the women, it's smoking, right? Is it tobacco or, or marijuana? Wow. And that is now the fashion of the day. Any hotel you go to, you find these young ladies there smoking shasha, shisha. Now, look at the 1950s. Somebody will say that they are outmoded. But don't you see that to be a very decent dressing? Now, look at us, half naked. Is that, is that what we want? We have no respect for our bodies. One of the things that I find very worrisome is how we have, especially for our women, how we have reduced ourselves uh, to less than animals. Excuse, excuse my language. Now, it is, it is even laughable to be a virgin, unfortunately. And also, this lack of censorship in the film industry, the music, the videos that you all watch, they are all influencing the way we think and the way we perceive our sexuality and sensuality. As we are people of culture and we have abandoned our culture, our societal norms, and we are upholding what is wrong. And we forget that we will be accountable one day. If not to God, even to our own selves, you'll be accountable when we engage in all such more practices, especially for women who drink, who smoke, and uh, who are so loose. Now, what happened to our men? They've stopped dressing decently. We have a website for sugar mummies. Hey, sometimes I cringe when I hear of such youth going online to get 
a woman who is much older than maybe your mother as your sexual partner for money. And that's what they call the Sugar Mummy's website. And I hope uh, you are not among such people. May God help us. Amen. Okay. Alcoholism. I'm going to talk extensively on that one because it's becoming a, a problem, a major concern. Alcohol use in Ghana, that is a report that we, got, we just got this year, 2022, uh, by Ghana NCD Alliance. And they call it a situational analysis of alcohol use in Ghana. And when you look at the statistics, it is very, very worrisome. And it says that alcohol consumption per capita, alcohol consumption per capita reached 2.7 liters in 2016. And the knife, you know what, when we say heavy episodic drinkers, you know who, what that means. Now, heavy episodic drinkers means that a person can drink uh, about five to five or more um, normal glass of pure alcohol within two hours. They are the binge drinkers. And 9.4% 9, 9 of Ghana's population comprised of 15 years and above are heavy episodic drinkers. Now, whereas 16.7% of the male population are heavy episodic drinkers, just 2.4, but I don't even think 2.4 is just. If you know Ghana's population, especially for the A bracket, 15 to 24, and we are having 2.4 of them being heavy episodic drinkers is, is a problem. And this is collaborating the general finding that males consume more alcohol than females, but it shouldn't even be so. A sizable proportion of teenagers, 6.2% male, that is 10%, 10.8%, and females, 1.4% of Ghanaians, aged 15 to 19, are heavy episodic drinkers. And we have some of us, some of the Adventist youth, also engaging in such practices. And so your friends call you Secret Drinkers Association for SDA. So it's a major concern. Secret Drinkers Association. Alcohol use disorders in Ghana was 4.1% in 2016, above the World Health Organization, and even above the African region. The African region was 3.7, and Ghana, ours was 4.1. Alcohol consumption in Ghana is largely dominated by men, as I've already indicated. But one of the things I saw, about 74% of the adult population are past year alcohol abstinence, with 84.3% of all being women. That is the frequency of alcohol intake by gender. Have a look at it. And then you tell me whether it's a problem or not. So every day, we have 4.1% of females drinking alcohol every day. And then we have 19.0 male who consume alcohol. And this alcohol is not the, this one is a pure alcohol, highly concentrated ones. So alcohol usage is becoming a major concern. How can we stop, how can we prevent drinking alcohol? That is one of the things that we have to look at. Um, this image that you see are two women, they are wearing kinte, so I presume they are Ghanaians. Two women who have married abroad, they are lesbians. Is it not disgusting? And then we have two men, whatever you call it is disgusting. That's not God, uh, how God intended uh, human beings to behave. Anyway, so lesbianism is believed that our secondary schools, as well as our tertiary institutions, are, it has permeated our schools. 
our educational institutions. And we have men and women, Adventist youth here, who have also engaged in such practices. Whatever it is, even if you have engaged, you can still be helped. You can, there's, there's, there's hope for everybody, no matter what you have done. In 2014, an old of Ola girls said something, and I saw this online, so it was very interesting, so I decided to add it. And she is saying that lesbianism has taken roots in her school. And it was a norm in the school as seniors coerce and harass juniors into the act. It has become a norm, and that is the concern. And I'm sure in your schools, you saw lesbianism, you saw homosexuality as a norm. If you saw, you saw such, then we, we have a cause uh, to be praying more for you. In fact, we pray for you, but if, if it's so, then we are in, in, in crisis. One, one of the major concerns that we also saw was that we have, in fact, when you go to the Volta region, the research was done by Mawuli Senior High School in the Volta region. And they reported that uh, the, the, the guys there, the boys there were engaging in homosexuality a lot. So they decided to come out to the media and, and to seek for help. And uh, on Thursday, 2nd of April 2009, it was, all, it was even in the, in the news, Ghana web. And this is what they said. Information reaching the state man newspaper indicates that a new gay and lesbian club, night club, have been opened on campus. That is the University of Ghana campus. And it has drawn unprecedented numbers, indicating a growing sexual liberalism among students. And the way they use sexual liberalism, is it? So when you engage in lesbianism and homosexuality, it means you have been liberated sexually. Is that, is that what is happening? So they are making it to be like the norm, which is not. Masturbation. How many of you are engaged? If I should ask, you will not raise your hand. But we have a lot of people who are engaged in masturbation. And you know what masturbation is, right? Now, a research was conducted in 2020 by Minta, and it revealed that uh, adolescent attitude towards masturbation by sample senior high school students in Cape Coast here uh, was that uh, they were more of ambivalent, as, as they regarded it to be irreligious but bad, and bad practice, but yet they are saying it's pleasurable. Now, if you have not engaged in such. How would you know it's pleasurable? So they were saying that it's, it's not right for us to do that. Um, it's immoral. It's not religious, but pleasurable. So I say that um, they, they practice it. And it's becoming a new search. Because now, with a click of a button, you can go online, assess porn, and all that. And it's really worrying us. We have limited parental control and more peer pressure. That is also worrying us. And a lot of people are engaged in this uh, masturbation. How can we help? We'll get to that. You remember not long ago, Dr. Ali Gabas in Cape Coast. Um, he was sentenced to 25 years for defiling a child. Now, Dr. Ali Gabaz was a pediatrician. Who have heard of that case before? You don't read the news? Okay. He was a pediatrician. And he is in jail for 25 years. Why? Because he defiled his own client, a child. And when we talk of defilement, who knows what defilement is? Okay, you just raise your hand. I will ask you. If you've heard of defilement, just raise your hand. I will, I will ask you what defilement is. I just want to know whether you are aware. Oh, you don't know what defilement is. Okay. When we talk of defilement, it means that you've had sexual intercourse with a male or a female who is less than 16 years. So when you have sexual intercourse 
with either a boy or a girl below the age of 60 years, it is called defilement. Okay. And uh, for Dr. Abbas' case, he defiled a young boy, what we call the uh, sodomy or homosexual. Okay. And it's a major concern in the central region here because, unfortunately for us, Cape Coast has become a hub for prostitutes for such uh, homosexual practices. So we are getting a lot of them coming here, coercing you, enticing you with a lot of money for you to engage in homosexuality. And it is wrong because it will end your life. And Dr. Ali, who is not just a medical doctor, but a specialist pediatrician, jailed 25 years. Um, last year, around November, another uh, person, he was the head pastor of Apostle Continuation Church. And uh, he was also sentenced to 22 years for defiling a 12-year-old boy. Now, this boy was sick and was sent to this pastor for help. He was a head pastor. And they have their prayer camp at um, getting to Chifuprasu area. And they sent the boy there for deliverance. And he ended up being defiled. Now, a school teacher, all these cases, you can even go online. Unfortunately, when you, you search for my name, you get some of these cases there. They are cases that I've reported. That's why I'm mentioning them. And I sent them to prison. <laughs> a school teacher was sentenced to 20 years. And that one, this one is this year. Why? Because he defied the 13-year-old people under his care. And then we had also one. Um, he was a home teacher for the students. So he got to know when the parents are at home. So uh, one day when the parents were not there, he went there and he defiled the child. Then he warned the child not ever to disclose else he would die. But the child was in so much pain, so he disclosed it to the parents. And that's that how come the case was reported to the police and it ended in my courtroom. Another guy, Muntala Seydou, was sentenced no longer ago to 22 years for defiling a 30-year-old imbecile. You know what an imbecile is? So um, he's also a teacher of a special school for those who are mentally retarded. And he defied one of the students. So we have cases, and ca these are just sample of some of uh, the cases that I hear every day. And you won't believe it. All the perpetrators, those that are now convict prisoners I've mentioned, are youth. With the exception of Dr. Ali Gabas, who was 32 years, the, the rest were all youth, and also the, the head pastor. The head pastor was 44 years. The rest are all, can all be considered as youth. And they all attend churches. Okay. Now let's go to pornography. A worrisome research that we found in September 2021, it was reported that Ghana has been ranked second highest. Hello? I know you are tired. You went for training, and I'm sure the weather too is not helping us. But try to stay awake. September 2021, Ghana was ranked second highest porn watching country in the world. In the world, second. And we believe so. Why? Because it was coming from Pornhub. Don't go and search Pornhub. Pornhub released that their viewers and subscribers from the top 25 countries, you know, they have the whole world, they have people who subscribe and who view whatever, who assess their channel. And out of the people who, the countries that assess their channel, 25 of them were the top highest. Then the top highest out of the 25, Ghana was the second. Ghana was second. And Ghanaians, we are a religious country, aren't we? 71% of Ghanaians are Christians. 
70% Muslims. When you do the calculation, 71 plus 17 gives you how much? How much? So the remainder of those who are not Christians are what? How many percent? And yet, we, the Christian and Muslim country, as we have in Ghana, we are the second highest lovers of pornographic movies and pictures. Second highest. And because of this, Professor Kusia Dakwa commented on he, she was so aghast, as I also find myself when I read the report. And this is what she said. We feel too embarrassed by our unwillingness to confront and address, and until we recognize this has happened here, we should, uh, until we recognize that this is taking place here, people are watching Pono by night, and that's going about their daily business day by day, and probably during the day, condemning those who are watching it. Yes, those who are watching it will be condemning those who are watching it. That's what she's trying to say. Because how can we be second highest if we are all not engaged in such practices? So she indicated that if many Ghanaians are watching pornographic materials, then what does it tell us? What does it tell Ghanaians about our sexuality? What does it tell us about sex life? It means we have prioritized it as the most important thing in our lives. Is that not so? If we are the second highest in the country, in the world. Now, a research by George Anderson Jr. and Joseph Opon on the topic youth and pornographic in, in Ghana, an ethical perspective, concluded by saying that the consumption of pornographic materials by the youth in Ghana has negative effects on their attitudes, their behaviors, and moral foundations. And why not? When we are wasting our time, when we are wasting our lives, viewing pornographic materials and videos. Now, there's, this, this is um, a, a research that we conducted recently in one of the schools. I won't mention the school. But this is what it, it came up with. Have you ever watched pornographic videos, pictures before? How often would, would, would that be? And look at the percentage there. They were honest with us. Those who said yes are... Uh, 97%. Those who said no, 3%. How often? Daily was 10.3%. <laughs> Weekly, 13%. Monthly, 18%. Once a while, 58.7%. Hello? Are you following? Now, from what source did you watch these pornographic rated or S rated videos or pictures? Look at internet. Internet is what? 97%. Smartphones, 90%. So when you get your smartphones, is that what you use it for? 90% use smartphones to watch pornographic movies and, vid and, and, and pictures. Magazines, 60%. Dicks, 79%. And do you consider pornographic materials to be addictive? Those who said yes is 90%. Those who said no is 10%. So if you know that it's, it's highly addictive, why are you engaging in such? You want to be addicted to it? No wonder we are, we are the second high, uh, highest in the world. Now, the effects of the consumption of pornography on the attitudes, behavior, and moral foundations of the youth. Their, their response, these are the people, they responded it to their questions. And those who gave the 100% said it promotes early engagement in sexual activities. And it's so, because as, as I sit there, and all these defilement cases are appearing before me, sexual harassment cases are appearing before me. As age, as little as age nine, I engage in sex. Nine years, I having sexual intercourse. We have males who are defiling two-year-old children. 
One year, 18 months babies. A grandfather defiling a child who is two years. And we get such cases every single day. When you were not here and I was sitting here, I was writing one of my judgments for tomorrow. And it's a defilement case. So it is very worrisome. Every single day, we are having people defiling, engaging in sexual moral practices. And look at what pornography, even the status for pornography here. I earlier on talked about masturbation. But look at, and I talked about homosexuality and lesbianism. But if you look at pornography, now it contributes to the heightened level of teenage pregnancy and rape. Not long ago, they did a research in Ghana uh, involving the teenage pregnancy in the country. In Central Region, we were the second highest. If we are to use the uh, population range, we will be the highest. Now, it is time consuming. That's what somebody said. Yes, of course, it's time consuming to use your smartphones and your laptops and computers they are supposed to use for studying to watch pornography. Now, it causes and enhances masturbation. You see, so masturbation and pornography are correlated. Is that not so? Because as you watch the pornography materials, then it will drive you to do the masturbation. So it is a problem. It's a major concern. And that is why we, we deem it as moral decadence. Now, another question was posed. The effects of the consumption of pornography on attitudes, behaviors, and moral foundation of the youth. We wanted them to tell us what they think, according to them, what will be the effects of all the pornography materials that they have been consuming. And this is the, their response. It takes one attention from work, academic, social, or office work. Of course. And I will add that it takes your attention from your, from your, your books. And those who said that are 87.5%. Now, the 87.5%, are they among the second highest viewers? Ask yourself. Now, it creates the avenue to have a sexual desire for different relationships. So pornography will make you unfaithful. That's what they are trying to say. You will not be loyal to your partner. You will want to get other partners. It affects one's way of thinking towards the opposite sex. So because you watch pornography material and you see a nice lady or beautiful girl going about, then you start to have sexual tendencies towards the girl, sexual feelings, and then you want to have sexual intercourse with the girl. So that is what it's trying to say. So it, it gives, it, it affects your way of thinking. Instead of seeing that person as a Christian sister, you see that person as a sexual material. So it is a concern. Now, the last one. The effects of the consumption of pornographic on the attitudes, behaviors, and moral foundation of the youth. Um, it says that it corrupts one's religious lifestyle. No long ago, there was a program, and we heard that some people were in, in, in church. A boy and a girl were in church, and they were watching pornography in church. Did you hear about that? Yes. Okay, so it's corrupts one religious lifestyle. So if you was in church, you are watching pornography. Pornography movies and pictures. What, is, what has become of us? Like I indicated earlier on, that all these have become the norms. We don't even cringe when, when we hear of such, because it's not the norm. It contributes to the contraction of STIs resulting from unprotected sexual intercourse. Now, do you even hear of AIDS, AIDS anymore? HIV, AIDS. Do you hear about it? It's still there. And Central Region, we are leading in the whole country. And it's still there. HIV is real. People are still contracting HIVs. Even though we are now silent about it. And those who are contracting it are those who are engaging in sexual practices, the homosexualities and all that. And people are silent. Not long ago, we used to say that those who engage in homosexuality are those who are contracting the HIV. Now, because of whatever is going on, it's silent. Nobody's talking about it. 
Okay, so what is causing or what are the causes of all these moral decadence? The one I've just listed. Now, the alarming rate of moral decadence in Ghana can be attributed to the cumulative effect of the failure of many social institutions, notably the family. Our families have failed us. The church has failed us. And our schools are also failing us. Why are we saying the family? The family is the unique unity of any society. And yet, parents are not having time for their children. We are not being responsible. And children are also deciding not to listen and listen to their parents. You are being disrespectful, not obedient. And you think you are in school, so you, you are above everybody. And you will not be submissive. So because of that, the family has failed us. And the church, what is happening in our churches? I will come to that. But when you look at uh, Omonijo and others, they made the following observations on their study on the proliferation of churches and moral decadence in Nigeria, not in Ghana. And the church, they are saying that the churches have not strongly condemned immorality, but rather provide comfort zones for moral decadence. Is it so? Yes. You enter a church and then you marvel whether you are in a church. You may think you are in a disco. The dressing, even the music. And some unbiblical practices have been associated with the church and they are also not condemning such. Fornication is not being condemned as long as you are not pregnant and found. Alcohol, the Secret Drinkers Association, as I earlier said. Adultery. Fornication, I've repeated fornication again. Lesbianism and gayism. These are all being condoned by the churches. Outward show of opulence, not much with meaningful hard work. I earlier mentioned to you uh, the Kaswa boys' case. They wanted ritual money because they wanted to live a life of what the other, they see others uh, living. Opulence life. Several cases of fraud and corruption synonymous with churches and ministers. Not long ago, um, what's the name? Um, Agrada. What name do you give her? <laughs> Thank you, Mama Pat, Evangelist Pat. Can you imagine? <coughs> not, not long ago, she was a fetish priest. And now she is, what? <coughs> All right. <coughs> Mama Pat is making me cough. <coughs> we have cases of disorderliness and rowdiness. Moral integrity has been replaced with lazity with prosperity gospel. I've just been shown five more minutes. But do you think I'll listen to it? <laughs> I have seen it, but I won't mind you. <laughs> yeah, you are saying thank you. Yes, because most of you were not here when we started. All right, so we have a lot of factors, and I've grouped some into biological factors. The sciences are saying that some people may be affected through their hormones and the genes that are being passed on from their parents. <coughs> there may be some truth in it, because um, we have a saying that uh, like mother, like daughter, like father, like son. Is that not so? Okay, so there may be some truth in it. If your father or mother or parents uh, are quarrelsome, the, 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 the tendency of you developing such habits is high. If you are, your parents are thieves, you end up also stealing. So there may be some truth in that. But I am not for that. No matter where or who your parents are, you can be a better person if you choose to. 
Some negative attitudes are regarded as genetic traits of parents who have their similar lifestyles. This argument is valid because of an individual can inherit some good traits from his or her parents, and in the same way we can inherit bad ones. Is that so? Okay, let's look at the sociological factors. I've already indicated the home. Some of the examples I've gave earlier about the media, television and internet, the youth being influenced by the advertisement that they watched, and also the pornographic that you've been watching on your smartphones and mobile phones. Um, peer pressure, economic factors, poverty and fashion and culture and religion. So we see all such as causes of moral decadence. In some, broken homes, if I have my way, all of you here, I know you have the dream of completing your education. Some of you are mature, are already married. But those who aren't, you have the, 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 the hope of uh, completing, getting a good job, marrying and having children. Is that also? Now, if I have my way, nobody will be allowed to have children until that person att attends uh, uh, parental classes of a sort. Learn how to bring up children. People give birth and they are so irresponsible. And that is one of the causes of moral decadence in our society. Decline in religious and moral training, peer influence, moral laxity. Moral laxity because it has become a norm. The social media and all that. And in some, we say that poverty, parental neglect, sexual misconduct, influence of Western education, the soap press that you have been watching. It has also been influencing you think, to think that it's all right, it's okay to have sexual uh, intercourse outside marriage. And it is not okay. Now, let's look at the challenges that we have. We have a lot of spiritual challenges, but I've just listed a few. When you engage in all this moral decadence, you realize that your prayer life will change. You cannot even pray. And then you can't even study the word of God. You can't study your Bible. When we, we are calling you to come for Sabbath school, you are missing. Some even try, you know, don't attend churches. We have low church attendance. And then you live a life of duplicity, what I call hypocritical lifestyle. You want others to think that you are, you are all right, you are pure, but you are not. And it affects also your professional life. Your competence is affected. Your punctuality is affected. If you are wasting your time watching pornographic movies, won't you be affected uh, professionally? Yes, you will be. You cannot be relied upon because when we want you to come and do some work, you are in your room masturbating and sleeping. Now, we have psychological challenges. There are people who have suicidal tendencies because of all these that they have engaged in. Drugs, narcotics. As I, as I stand here, we have a lot of narcotic cases before me. Narcotic cases. Marijuana is now like um, somebody just going to buy water. Because it's also cheap, affordable. People can afford. We have a lot of people with emotional disorders. They are instable. Try to have a discussion with some of them and realize that the person is not stable in mind. And they also get low self-esteem. It affects you also. We have challenges financial. The Advanced Heritage Fund is here to talk to you about maybe their how to save and all. How can you save when you are wasting your money uh, on uh, data for pornography? Using your money to buy marijuana? So it affects your financial life. You, you can't plan your life well. And you become a slave for immoral acts. Some of these drug addicts, when they appear before me, you, they have also gone to steal. So they use their proceeds from stealing to buy marijuana. So you ask the person, you are slaving for marijuana. So you go to that extent to steal only for you to get money to buy marijuana. So you are buying something to destroy your own life. Isn't that pathetic? But that's what we are finding ourselves in. It also is a challenge educationally because you lack concentration. When you are in school, it's of you to concentrate and study. What are you doing? 
do all sorts of things that takes your mind off your books and also creates absenteeism. You are sleeping or away from school because of all this uh, truancy. How do we keep this? Now, you, can't, you cannot manage when you don't really know the consequences and the challenges. And that's why I've taken my time and, uh, to uh, uh, list the challenges and the consequences. The pure, poor academic achievements, unplanned and unwanted pregnancies, please, it can happen to anybody. When you engage in uh, premarital sex, it takes just one, one encounter to make you pregnant. And when you are pregnant, because you don't want to be disgraced, to be embarrassed, what do you do? You want to go and abort. And abortion can end your life. Or it can make you infertile. You can never have children. And we have adult incontinence. We have people who have to wear diapers. Because of all this, the homosexuality as they have been engaging themselves in. Diseases from smoking, the lung cancers and the rectal cancers from homosexualities. And you can also contract HIV and AIDS and other STIs. It can result in death. Just the beginning of this week, I read that a young man took a, 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 a lady of 15 years to a hotel. And then he used one of these um, um, aphrodisiac sprays. He used it and he was able to have sex with this woman for at least four or so hours. And he died. He has died early this week. Those who read it early this week. In Accra here, I'm a summon. He He's dead and gone. Now, decline in religious attendance. Decline in religious attendance. You see, the survey report for 2020 are as follows. Those who attend um, church every week are 24%. Only 24%. And those who attend once in a while, 9%. Those who attend once in a month, 11%. Those who attend seldomly, 25%. So where are our youth? They are not attending churches. And that is one of the causes of moral decadence. Somebody will say that when they go to church, they don't learn anything. So how do we manage it? There is a need for individual holiness. We are not blaming anybody here. We blame ourselves first. There is a need for individual, what, holiness. Put it at the back of your mind. Try, strive to live a virtuous life, a life of holiness. Be pious. Enoch was like us, but he lived a life of holiness. Tell yourself that I will try, I will not lie, I will lead an honest life. Stay away from alcohol. Stay away from drugs. Stay away from sexual immoralities. It is you who can make and unmake your life. You have the key to your life. The key of, to your future is, is in your hands. Don't waste it away. And don't ever trade your life, your future, to alcoholism, to pornography, to masturbation. Don't trade it. Claim your life. Because your future is in your hands. A lot of people will tell you that you can mess up and later on sit up. It's a lie. This is your formative years. This is when you have to sit up. And when you sit up, you become an example unto others. I heard of one of your preaching, um, uh, the, the guest speaker was saying that you have to be the evangelist. Your life should be the evangelism. Is that not so? So your life should be the evangelism. There should be enlightenment and moral education in schools. Of course, they would have to play their parts. Our schools are doing what they can. But much depends on you. Nobody will force you to come to, to, uh, for studies to study your Bible. It depends on you. Our communities, our churches, or in schools, they have their own uh, part to play. They can also do the mentorship programs for us. 
But as a youth, engage in extracurricular things to help you, you know, stray your mind from all these truancies. Engage in sports, for instance. Today you went for sports, and that's why some of you were so tired and couldn't come. Engage in music. Sing. Learn to play the piano or a musical instrument. Engage your life. Learn to do some crafts. As you are here, you are in school. You have free time. What do you do with your children? Have a hobby. And engage in such hobbies to take your mind off such things. And I think that with all these, um, if you are able to do that for yourself, you will be able to stay away from uh, moral decadence that we have in our society. That is making our society run uh, swiftly to a collapse. There's a need for censorship, and that is the government's work. They will have to do that. Censorship of the contents of what is being transmitted through the airwaves. The religious leaders and uh, parents should be role models in upholding morality. That doesn't affect you, and that's why I'm rushing on. Schools and parents must double their roles. Religious bodies must preach and practice their biblical standards. They are all very important. But the most important one is for you as an individual to take hold of your life and make sure that as your theme says, you what? You press on and what? Thank you very much. Please.